This lemon bun cake is really delicious. It has a combination of sour cream, lemon juice, and zest. And then lemon syrup brushed on top before serving takes this cake from ordinary to extraordinary. So cream, two sticks of butter, half a pound, two and a half cups of sugar, regular granulated sugar. The decorative pan that we're using for this particular cake, when it's turned out, it should look pretty much like this with all these very fine indentations. So butter and flour very well. Use softened butter, just brush it all in into every little nook and cranny, and then lightly flour and bang out all the excess. That is a well-prepared uh, pan. So this gets creamed, and then we have six eggs, quite a few eggs in this cake. So there, now add the eggs one at a time. This is a good way to add a lot of eggs just by pouring them into the butter and sugar. Bring up the speed a little bit. You want this to be light and fluffy before you add the dry ingredients. The dry ingredients, simple, three cups of all-purpose flour. I'm always using, unless it calls for cake flour, some other kind of flour, an unbleached white flour one teaspoon of salt and the zest of two lemons. This goes right into the dry ingredients. And by putting it into the flour like this, you'll be pretty assured that it will not go to the bottom of the bowl. After you zest, then you juice. Bright skin citrus. Always use that. And then just push this around with a whisk. This is almost as good as putting it through a fine sieve, but if you have the lemon zest in it, if you put it through a sieve, it wouldn't work. So this is the best way to do this. Okay, so this is ready, and we need some juice. A third of a cup of lemon juice. Beautiful lemons. And if you find that the lemons are a little large, cut off the pointy ends, the stem end and the pointy end. And use your little hand squeezer, which works very effectively, gets out all the juice, and doesn't dirty a great big machine. So we need just a third. It'll probably be one and a half lemons. There, one and a half. So a little bit of dry and a little bit of wet. We have one cup of sour cream. Sour cream, yogurt, buttermilk, those tend to keep baked goods moist and they add a very subtle flavor. Our third of a cup of lemon juice and one teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda because we're using sour cream. And the rest of the dry ingredients. And now you get this right into your prepared decorative pan. Carefully fill, and this glass bowl is great because it has a little pour spout, making this process easier. Now this is a good batter, it hasn't been overbeaten. If you beat it too, too much, you might get too many air bubbles, which will make a less fine textured cake. But if you underbeat it, you won't get all those ingredients incorporated correctly. There, that looks very good. So now, squiggle it around a little bit to even out the volume, and then tap just to knock out any additional air bubbles. Transfer this right to a 350 degree oven anywhere from 55 to 60 minutes. So it's a combination of the batter and the pan that makes a cake look like this. It's gorgeous, but to gild the lily, uh, don't forget to glaze it with some really good sour sweet lemon glaze, which is very easy to make, a half a cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice, and a half a cup of sugar. This is like a simple syrup. So just heat this until all the sugar is dissolved. And have the cake on a rack. I have a piece of parchment paper underneath. And pierce the cake with the point of a wooden skewer, just a little bit here and there. This will help the lemon syrup sink down into the cake and the syrup should be warm when you brush it on. 
And just don't pour it all over, just brush. Mm, you can see it just soaking it up. Just a slice of this with a cup of tea. I can't think of anything I would rather have. Now this glaze really does serve uh, not only to flavor the cake, but also to keep it fresh. It kind of seals in the moisture. So here, I'm done. Really pretty. I have one all done right over here and I want to show you what it looks like. Look how pretty. The glaze has really kind of crystallized on the exterior of the cake. And we'll take a slice. Look how beautiful that cake is. Studded with lemon peel. Served with a pretty slice of lemon like that. Lemon bundt cake. Try it, you'll enjoy it. So this is a devil's food bundt cake, and I am very excited to show you how to make this. It derives actually from a recipe that one of my colleagues developed. She was trying to recreate a cake her father had made out of cake mix and a chocolate pudding box. This does not have either of those things in it, and you're going to love this cake. The mold itself, look how pretty that design is. And we have sprayed with vegetable spray and then coated with Dutch process cocoa. So you don't have any flour, you're not gonna get any white coating on your beautiful dark devil's food cake. So that's ready for the batter. The batter is uh, rather easy to make, but um, takes a few steps. Dutch processed cocoa. It's unsweetened and you need one cup of it mixed with one cup of boiling water. This immediately makes you a very bitter cocoa. Stir this up, it smells so good. This dark cocoa really does make a very beautiful devil's food cake. And it has to be unsweetened because you're gonna add your own sugar. And to this cocoa, add sour cream, one cup of sour cream. Sour cream, buttermilk, creme fraiche, all of these slightly fermented liquids make a very moist and tasty cake. So stir that in too. And this is part of the liquid that we'll add to the cake. Okay, so we'll just let that sit over here. Sift your dry ingredients. Three cups unbleached all-purpose flour measured into a large bowl. One teaspoon of baking powder, fresh baking powder, and one teaspoon of baking soda. When you're using something like a sour cream or a buttermilk, you use a baking soda to help with the leavening process. And a quarter of a teaspoon of fine salt. So here's our dry ingredients. Now cream three sticks of butter, and these should be at room temperature. If they are not at room temperature, it takes a longer time to cream. So. Cream the butter with two and a quarter cups of sugar, a lot of sugar. But remember, these are 12 cup cake pans and you need a lot of batter to fill. You can add one tablespoon of vanilla. A lot of flavor in this cake. And now add your eggs, large eggs, one by one, four. So now add your dry ingredients alternating with the chocolate mixture. There, so that's done. And now one last step before putting this into our beautiful decorative cake pan, and that is incorporating semi-sweet chocolate chips. You only need one and a quarter cups. That'll add just a huge depth of chocolate flavor to this cake and a quarter. Try to go all the way down, incorporate them throughout the batter. Now this would be an excellent batter for cupcakes as well as for this wonderful devil's food bun cake. Get this right into your mold. Now do you see why you dust the cake mold with cocoa? This dark batter will only look darker when it comes out of the pan instead of dusted with white flour. So level the batter on a nice, even cake. 
And this will rise pretty much to the top of the pan. And go like this and like that. And get it right into a preheated 325 degree oven. Bake until the top springs back and lightly touched. Now this takes one to one and a quarter hours. Now let the cake cool about 15 minutes in the pan and then turn it out onto a rack. Cooled completely, then you can either glaze it with a chocolate ganache, very delicious and very shiny and pretty, or you can just powder sugar it. And that's what I'm gonna do right now, but I have it on this pretty cake stand and I don't wanna get the cake stand full of powdered sugar, so this is a little tip. Just insert strips of parchment paper, wax paper underneath the cake. This is gonna catch the powdered sugar, the excess, and allow you to have a pretty unsullied cake stand. Just like a little snow on top of this perfect cake. And then you just remove these carefully like that. You can do this with any kind of cake. It's dense, it's heavy for its size, and the decorative markings on the cake pan are extremely visible. A well-made cake, this devil's bunt cake we call it. And a slice served by itself. A good crumb. That texture is called the crumb. And I think that is a really pretty cake. And it is devilishly delicious. I think you'll agree. Enjoy. Years ago, my daughter posted a delicious cake, a whipped cream cake on her blog. Uh, we found out that the recipe came from my friend, Rose Levy Berenbaum. Most cakes are made with butter or oil, but what makes this recipe unique is that it's made with heavy cream, which yields unbelievably moist and tender cakes. So let me show you how to first prepare the cake molds. You can see what it's going to look like if you turn the pan upside down and very deep indentations. So you have to be really careful to thoroughly butter the pans. Use soft butter that's at room temperature and a pliable bristle brush and get way down into the, <laughs> I call them the nooks and the crannies, but that's what they are. So once you butter, then you lightly flour with cake flour. You could probably spray with a vegetable spray but I find that sometimes that alters the taste of a cake, and we want this to taste buttery, creamy, delicious. Okay, there. So now we're ready to sprinkle a little bit of flour in each one. So just really try to get the flour in and around the entire mold. So there, that's good. It's perfect. Now, measure your dry ingredients. Two and a quarter cups of cake flour. Add two teaspoons of fresh baking powder and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Now, whisk first to get all of that incorporated and then sift twice. And by the way, this is not a recipe that calls for self-rising cake flour. Do not use the kind that comes with leavening in it. So those are our dry ingredients. Now, here's the whipped cream. One and a half cups of heavy cream. Whip that until it's just soft, peaks. And we have three large eggs mixed with one teaspoon of vanilla. Pour this into your whipped cream. Basically, your heavy cream is your butter. I bet you've never made a cake like this before. And then we're going to slowly add one cup plus two tablespoons of super fine sugar. A super fine sugar is essential in this recipe for the very delicate texture that we're looking for. And so process the sugar in the cream and eggs for about two minutes. And now we're going to mix the dry ingredients into the egg mixture. 
and whisk it around by hand with the whisk. Start with a little bit and then add the rest. You see how nicely this works? Don't overmix because you don't want to deflate. And finish off with a rubber spatula. So there, there's our batter. Looks very good. And uh, I'm going to use a pastry bag. This has a closed tip right now. I'll cut off the tip. And I'll use this to fill the molds. So now we have our pastry bag all filled. Cut off the tip and fill. See how easy this is? Boy, does this save a lot of time just to squeeze this right into each mold. You come up about oh, a little bit more than halfway. Now make sure you get these right into a 375 degree preheated oven until a tester comes out clean and that the top springs back when you press with your finger. Here they are. This is what they look like. See how nicely puffed? And when you press down, see how they pop right back up again, they're done. Look how pretty they are when they come out of the molds. Put a dollop of whipped cream on a plate, put a very attractive whipped cream cake on top, and I think I'm gonna have raspberries. And you can just top them like that. What a pretty, pretty cake. And I thought I'd show you what this cake looks like inside. It breaks beautifully. It's very light and airy. And it's awfully good just to eat like this. A delectable cake and easy to make. Enjoy. Now here's another wonderful looking and delicious tasting bunch shaped cake. I first made this cake, an applesauce spice cake, many years ago. I found that baking it in a decorative mold like this makes it look really pretty and special, but as tasty as they come. Butter and flour your cake pan. Sift your dry ingredients. Two and two thirds cups of cake flour. Not self-rising cake flour, this is regular cake flour. It's harder and harder to find in the grocery store, but look for it. Buy yourself a couple of boxes and just put it in the freezer. So two and two thirds cups of cake flour, one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cloves. I love ground cloves. They're very pungent, so don't use too many. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, and one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And use baking soda because we're using applesauce, which is a little bit sour and uh, important to use the uh, baking soda to counteract the sourness. Now, grate about a half of a fresh nutmeg. Fresh nutmeg is so much tastier and better. Now sift these dry ingredients together. I'm using an extra fine sieve. There. Okay, so here's our dry ingredients. Now, uh, one and a half cups of currants. Currants are small grapes that are dried and they are so tasty in this cake. So one and a half cups. A substantial amount, but you want a lot of fruits, a lot of nuts, and one and a half cups of dark raisins. I like the dark in this particular cake. And one and a half cups of chopped walnuts. Now, to keep these from sinking to the bottom of the cake, use a little bit of your cake flour and toss the fruits and nuts with the flour. This flour helps hold the um, fruit in the batter. So there, fruit, dry ingredients, butter, one and a half sticks of butter, 12 tablespoons, creamed with one and a half cups of light brown sugar. Now pack the sugar. Dark brown, light brown sugar requires packing into your measure. 
you can get quite a bit. And don't, I mean, don't pack it so, so tight, but it's important to pack. And have one and a half cups of warmed applesauce ready to use as the wet ingredient in this particular batter. Two large eggs. Now, once this is well creamed, you can start adding the dry ingredients with the applesauce. It smells so good. I live on a farm and I have lots of old fashioned apple trees. And I make an applesauce mix of all the apples. I freeze it in cup containers so that I always have it on hand for making something as delicious as an applesauce cake. Once this is all mixed, add the raisins, currants, and the nuts. Now look at the proportion of nuts and fruits to batter. Quite a lot. And just add these to the batter. Fold them in very well. So that little bit of flour really does keep the fruit and nuts suspended in the batter. So they're all mixed up. Perfect. You can pour your batter right into the mold. This is a 12 cup mold and it holds this large amount of dense batter that we've just created. This is a really good batter. I always like to taste things before they're baked, after they're baked, just to get an idea of what I'm making. Okay, so here's our batter. Give it a shake, maybe one little bang. Put this right into your oven, which is 350 degrees preheated. And this is going to bake at least 60 minutes. When you test with a cake tester, it comes out clean. Set your timer. Now, when this cake comes out of the oven, let it stay in the pan on a rack for at least five minutes. Then turn it out and cool it completely. And then take a piece. Actually, I like this cake tomorrow. The flavors just get better and better. And slice into it, serve it with, or you can serve it with some more applesauce if you like. You can serve it with ice cream. You can serve it just by itself. It is dense and wonderful and studded with goodness. I guarantee that this cake tastes and smells as wonderful as it looks. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Martha Bakes. Sift confectioner sugar and measure two cups into a bowl. Add a quarter cup whole milk and whisk together until smooth. Pour glaze over cake. To make a citrus glaze, replace the milk with an equal amount of citrus juice and some grated zest if desired. For a poppy seed variation, stir in two teaspoons of poppy seeds.